Hello, brothers and sisters. Bishop John Michael here. I'm glad to have the opportunity once again to begin to address you to talk about what's going on in our eparchy with the reopening of our churches, which I'm happy to announce. Wherever it's legal and consistent with what's going on in the Catholic Church in that area, I have authorized our parishes to begin to resume public worship beginning this Sunday, uh, May the 31st, which is the Feast of the Pentecost in the new calendar. How and whether that happens locally will depend a lot on local circumstances. But uh, in general, the uh, process may begin as of this weekend. We hope that the process begins especially with a very strong outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all of us who have gone through so much with the Holy Spirit's consolation, with his guidance, and with his leading us into all truth. Where it's legal and where we won't be undermining the pastoral uh, efforts of the local Roman dioceses, our churches will be open. However, we'll be limiting the number of people who can attend. We'll be insisting on social distancing. Everyone present will have to wear a mask or facial covering of some kind or another, unless there's a documentable medical reason uh, that a person cannot wear a mask. But social distancing has to take place uh, regardless. I've given the priest a set of detailed instructions on how the liturgy is to be handled, how the church is to be prepared, how it's to be cleaned before and afterwards, and on and on and on, quite detailed. It's based on a lot of research that I did as far as best practices, both with uh, the church, uh, with the liturgical theologians, other dioceses and bishops, as well as uh, experts in the medical field and fields of epidemiology who have all offered their own insight and their wisdom on the subject. These detailed, this detailed guidance uh, will be available if it isn't already on our eparchial website. Hopefully your priests are also applying that guidance in a uh, specific way to address the actual situation in your parish. But there's something I wanted to call to the attention of people who are my age or with underlying medical conditions like I have. And that is, I remind you, first of all, that the dispensation from attending Sunday liturgy is in effect and will remain in effect uh, as long as it is necessary. Certainly, that will be at least through the summer when uh, perhaps I will revisit the issue and whether or not we can restore the obligation to attend the divine liturgy. But in the meantime, what this means is you do not have to go to church on Sunday on pain of sin. And so I would say to people who are 65, which I will be in a month or over, for people who have underlying health conditions, like I have, several, and for anybody else who is a little bit nervous about it, I would urge you to stay at home right now. I live at home with my mom, who's 91, and my brother, who has to work outside the home. And so we're trying to keep our exposure, and especially the exposure of my mom, to a, a minimum. And for that reason, I'm here to tell you, I'm not going to go to church on Sunday, despite the fact that, it's been, that it will be Pentecost at the cathedral. I was able to, I was blessed to be able to go to the Divine Liturgy on Easter Sunday. That was the only day that I was in church. Otherwise, I've been celebrating at home with my family, which is a great blessing, believe me. I know that many of you have been dying to receive the Eucharist again. But I hope that this measures that we have taken in the meantime with closing public worship means that you will not die from the Eucharist, which is what we're continuing to try to avoid with all of the special preparations and plans that are going into opening public worship again. Remember that this is something that's going to happen step by step because the epidemic is not over. It's still with us, very much with us, and it's getting worse, not better. And so step by step, we want to see what's happening in our local situations, uh, whether the uh, virus continues to infect people, whether the number of cases goes up, goes down, what the mortality ends up being. We have to watch all of these things. And so that means especially those of us who are of a certain age and older, or who have underlying health conditions. I would ask you to exercise extreme caution. 
there is no nothing to be gained by rushing the process. We don't know enough about what's going on to be able to just rush back to pretending that the world hasn't changed a great deal, that things are what they used to be. They aren't. They won't be. This problem is going to impact our lives from here out, at least my life. So if you're old enough to remember Hill Street Blues, let's be careful out there. Don't do anything that's going to expose you or your loved ones to unnecessary danger. Speak to God from your heart. Commune with him through your spirit if you can't commune with him in the sacrament. Pay attention to live-streamed liturgies as much as you can, such as the liturgy from the cathedral or from your own parish. And so with this, I just want to let you know, those of you who are coming back, welcome back. Welcome back. It will be good to see you when I'm there too. May Almighty God bless us all. Keep us strong, keep us healthy, and keep us in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.